Hello, everyone, and welcome to this introductory theater talk for uh, the second year of the Refocus Project. I'm Anna Morton, the literary manager at Roundabout Theater Company. And I am Rosalba Rolón, artistic director of Pregones Puerto Rican Traveling Theater. It's so good to see you, Rosalba. Thank you for Great to see you as well. <laughs> um, so we're just really excited to welcome you all to this project. We'll give a little bit of information about where it came from, and then we'll talk through the readings. Uh, and hopefully you'll just get excited about what's to come over the next few weeks. Um, I'll just share where the Refocus Project, which is we're in the second year of, came from for Roundabout. It came from a desire to transform or to participate in the transformation of the American theater canon. We have noticed and feel that the works that are frequently talked about as classic plays have been defined by too few people and way too narrowly. We want to be able to be a part of the solution to that problem rather than continuing to uh, perpetuate the problem. And so we launched the Refocus Project in 2021 to spotlight 20th century plays from the Black American community. We worked in association with Black Theater United. Those readings were fully virtual. This year, we are featuring Latinx playwrights in partnership with the amazing Pregones Puerto Rican Traveling Theater. And we're so happy to be doing this in person uh, with a streaming component later this season. And so that is why um, Rosalba and I are here today. And again, it's just been such a delight to be able to partner with you and your company, Rosalba. Um, and I, because of that, just want to be sure to thank Luis Miranda Jr. who suggested that we connect and that this partnership might be a good opportunity. And it's just, it's been amazing from my perspective. And so I'm very grateful to him for everything he did to help bring us together. Thank you. And, and by the way, congratulations on a great year one oh, of the project. It was amazing um, uh, to, to see all, all that range of works uh, uh, in the, that first year. This is why we're so excited about partnering this year. And yes, um, thank you, Luis Miranda. He's a big fan of both Roundabout uh, Theater and Pregones Puerto Rican Traveling Theater. We too are committed to championing the works um, that will influence a change and advancement of the American theater as a field. And so this is a great opportunity to do that. We are an ensemble-based company. We also operate uh, two theaters, one in the Bronx mm -hmm. and one in in Manhattan, and we are the result of a merger of, of the Puerto Rican Traveling Theater and Pregones. And I just want to mention that the Puerto Rican Traveling Theater was founded by the iconic Miriam Colon in 1967. And then we worked together towards uh, the end of her life to, to make sure that we, that we completely uh, became one and continue working as one company. And we are super thrilled to be a part of this project. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. And yes, it's we're we're very lucky that we have been able to have the expertise of you and your staff and the amazing histories of these two theaters that have been in New York championing the work of Puerto Rican writers and artists and Latinx, all Latinx writers and artists over many, many years. And so it's it's just felt like a perfect match for what we're doing here today. <laughs> First, we have Sarita by Maria Irene Fornes, which will be on Monday, June 13th at 7 p.m. at the Laura Pels Theater at the Harold and Mimi Steinberg Center for Theater, directed by Rebecca Aparicio. Fornes was a brilliant and prolific Cuban-American playwright whose most famous pieces include Promenade, Fefu and Her Friends, and Mud. She wrote many, many, many plays, so those are just a couple of them. Uh, though her name is Familiar to many, I think, in the theater industry, her works simply don't get produced as much as they should. And so during the selection process, we had a conversation about how we felt it was really important to include her in this series. She was groundbreaking in so many ways, and this play has a little bit of music in it too, which is just a fun addition. And so we're just really excited to um, have another opportunity to celebrate her work here. I, I'm, so, I'm so thrilled that she was selected, that this play was selected. Maria Irene Fornes has such a track uh, record, so, you know, just to call it something, but it's really such a track, an attraction with generations of artists who just cannot get enough of her work. And even though they have been produced, as you said, um, and uh, not as much as she deserved to have been produced or that she deserves to be produced to this date. Um, so therefore, the opportunity to, to put a spotlight 
back to her work, back on her work, mm -hmm. also to give a new generation of artists an opportunity to delve into the story of Sarita mm -hmm. and, and all of its meaning in terms of human experience. Uh, it's, it's so important, and we're very grateful to the panel for having <laughs> this particular author and certainly this play. I love this play so much. And one of the things that I, the way in which I typically hear her name brought up is in the in contemporary artists who I'm talking to who are speaking about how she's influenced them and how she was a teacher to them and their writing style is um, in part indebted to her for everything she did, which is amazing. And it means that I'm not hearing quite so much about her own playwriting work. Often I'm hearing, I hear more about her uh, as a as a teacher. And so I think any chance we can have to bring her own playwriting out and, and particularly this play, which is just a, an amazing story of a woman's agency and, and sort of everything that she's going through as she's growing up. Um, I'm really excited about it, about this one in particular. I love all the plays, but... <laughs> It's a great place to start. Exactly. Exactly. So it's, it's perfect. It's the, it's the perfect overture. So then next we have The Ox Cart by Rene Marquez, and that will be on Thursday, June 16th at 7 p.m. at uh, Prigones PRTT's Puerto Rican Traveling Theater in Hell's Kitchen, um, and it will be directed by Cristina Angeles. And because this play has such a deep history with your company, Rosalba, I would love to hear a little bit about your thoughts. Well, um, this is also an iconic play for uh, Puerto Rican theater, both in the island from in, in Puerto Rico, where I was born and raised, and also in the um, New York scene in terms of um, uh, its own uh, Puerto Rican history. This is the play that Miriam Colon, uh, when she began the company as a touring company, saw it and thought of it because of it, oh, the geopolitical context uh, of this family's journey. And today we hear stories about immigration and we think that where there's so many, they're never enough considering the broad range of ways in which people get to this country, to the United States and what their experience is in this case, from a countryside in the island mm -hmm. to the city, to New York, to the Bronx, and then this journey for this family, uh, but also this political context around them that made them um, become who they were until they challenge what they were experiencing. And I will not say anymore. Yeah, <laughs> we can't give it away, but... <laughs> This is the play that Miriam said, you know what, even though this has been on the largest, finer centers in, in, in the Caribbean, in Puerto Rico, and I, I want to take it to the streets. And she began to, to experiment with this on the streets and on street corners and then to the theater when it was finally built and open. So it's very meaningful. And Miriam did get, get to play uh, throughout her life, the uh, daughter, the mother and the granddaughter. And the grandmother, and I got at some point in my life to play the daughter as well. So it's, it's emotionally very attached to the history of our theater, but also I think audiences will find a beautiful experience to come to, the, to that to the Puerto Rican traveling theater, experience the reading when it was where it was done 50 years or 60 years ago almost, and go to the um, small gallery we have in Miriam's honor, where we have additional information on the Oxcart. It's such an incredible. Um moment of kind of full circle in this celebration. And I just have to underscore uh, your recommendation to go to the archive because what you have upstairs, all the information about the history of Puerto Rican traveling theater, the history of this play in particular, and Miriam Colon is so incredible. I'm, I love that kind of thing. I'm a big nerd for that sort of history, but <laughs> it's just so exciting yeah. to see. Um, and I think this, you know, this is a play that when I first read it, immediately just jumped out to me as this is the kind of play that this project should be uplifting. Why do we not, why do more people not know this play? Why hasn't this play been done in on Broadway? Not that, you know, Broadway is necessarily the be all end all, but it's such an epic story. There's so many different moments in the story that I connected with in different characters and the idea of being able to play the different characters at different points in your life. Or, you know, I can imagine someone over the course of their life 
would come back to this play and see new things in it based on what they're experiencing in their own life that maybe they didn't see when they were a teenager and were identifying with the daughter, but then you have a child of your own and you think, you know, so I just, I, I'm, I'm so excited to hear it out loud. Um, I've read it on the page now a number of times and it really, um, it has really has moved me every single time. Next, we have a very special piece, Harlem Hellfighters on a Latin Beat, which will be on Thursday, June 23rd at 7 p.m., again at uh, Puerto Rican Traveling Theater, written by our very own Rosalba Rolón, music by Desmarc Guevara, and additional music by James Reese Europe, Rafael Hernandez, and the Harlem Hellfighters 369th Infantry Band. And I'm going to let you take this away, Rosalba, because this is really your, your piece. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's our piece. We thought it would be interesting to, to showcase one of the pr products of our work as an ensemble, mm -hmm. also to have a reading that would contain live music, uh, sort of another approach to the range of aesthetics that, that that's available in our in our uh, Latinx theater field and and sector. Uh, and the Harlem Fighters on a Latin Beat um, is a very interesting story because it is it is very uh, it's not well known that um, in during the first World War the regiments were segregated racially segregated. There was called the Negro regiments and the white regiments and and so. Uh, this amazing African American composer, James Reese Europe, amazing creative mind, and he had this dream uh, to create the first uh, Negro symphony orchestra in the country. But he also was quite patriotic, and he joined the army. And once in the army, he was challenged by um, a, a white uh, Colonel Hayward challenge him who became an ally and said, Jim, you've been wanted this symphony orchestra. We cannot give you a symphony orchestra, but how about if you build a military band yeah. the, and the, the, the black regiment will have a, a military band. And so at that time, you know, there was jazz was bubbling. Um, he said, I'm not going to convince the jazz musicians to come join uh, to, for a war that might explode. Well, they're actually finally having success with their music. So the band was half completed. It was supposed to be 35, 36 musicians. They needed 17. We said, oh, but I know a place where I can go and find dark skinned musicians that are trained, conservatory trained, and who may be interested. And they are in Puerto Rico. And wait, the story is about how James Reese Europe, who I, I have a crush on, <laughs> uh, he... Um, gets a permission to go to Puerto Rico. At that time, the island had just been invaded and, mm -hmm. and, and we were not uh, American citizens and very conveniently uh, were imposed a citizenship so we could go to war. So, but anyway, that juncture was used to recruit and offer the 17 musicians from Puerto Rico to come and join the Harlem Hellfighters. And they became half of the band. Mm -hmm. And first, they couldn't understand each other. Of course, the language, the instruments, right. nothing, you know. But out of that creative friction, we begin to hear the first sounds of Latin jazz, the first notions. But also, was in the hearts of this of this new made military band that finds a voice of. Mm -hmm. Own. And I just was fell in love with the story. So I through the Library of Congress and all the kinds of research and also with the support of the great grandchildren of, um, of Colonel Europe and also uh, uh, Lieutenant Europe, I should say, and also um, the, the grandchildren, great grandchildren of the Puerto Rican composers that came as soldiers and became this amazing well-known composers and you know where they found their their true moment was when they went to France because they did have to go to war uh, and in France they became it's, it's there that they received the biggest honor and became the Harlem Hell Fighters in France <laughs> <laughs> so it's that whole journey of of first attention and then the, the solidarity and then the family that's created moving forward after they came back and the war was over and what happened to them mm -hmm. and I'll it there. So the last play in our reading series is called El Torito de California and it is on Monday, June 27th at 7 p.m. The play is by Fausto Avendaño and directed by Galia Bacall. Uh, it will be at the Laura Pels Theater at the Harold and Mimi Steinberg Center for Theater. 
This is a play that was written in 1979. It's a bilingual play, but it is mostly in Spanish. And we were really excited about including a Spanish language play in this year's reading series. So there will be English super titles available on, on stage, an onstage screen for those audience members who don't speak or understand Spanish. This is a play that is about the very beginnings of the Mexican-American War, but it's a perspective that I think we don't often see in telling that story and a part of the history that we don't really hear about frequently. And there were a number of folks who grew up in California or sort of near the border who read this play when we were talking about what we wanted to choose for the series, who were just couldn't believe that they had never read this before, that they hadn't heard this part of the history, that this is a, a story that is so deeply important to American history that uh, we don't get told from the perspective that this play is telling it from, which is not from the American perspective. It's from the perspective of some Mexican folks who are having to deal with the America invading their, their town in what is in what's now California. Um, and I think this play also has a, quite a bit of uh, humor in it, which I really enjoy. And finally, the other thing that I was going to say about it is just that it uh, has a, a there's a surprising moment in the middle of the play. It's very much a realistic story. And then there's one moment in the middle of the play at the beginning of the second act that just explodes with theatricality. And I won't give it away more than that, but it is something that um, I think really pushed this play over the edge for me and being something very exciting to see because it just shows the possibilities of what you can do on stage. Uh, if, if th This is the one play that will take the whole series to a perfect <laughs> order, right? I mean, I... I have a soft spot and a very in my heart because for for these types of sto stories, first of all for historical plays, but in this case, because we work we're very close in our company with so many artists um, in the border and in the, uh, in California specifically and throughout that whole region. And right now we watch the news today and we watch this news about what's happening in ukraine and you know we and other places where there are this this intense intense aggressive wars and invasions and attempts and violence we forget that this is how california came to be yes and this is the one play that basically you know uh, gets us there to that point of reflection and at the same time the humor and I love the fact that it's a corrido you know mm -hmm. in the title which for us is like corrido you start moving right even if it's not a musical um, because it is about that internal rhythm of mm -hmm. this family of, of this man of, of these people who are one day in their motherland and a few years later it's not their motherland anymore and so, so I'm very thankful that this play is included. So those are our readings. Um, Rosalba, this was so wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me to talk about all of these plays. And again, we're so, so happy that we were able to partner with you on this series. We are thrilled. We're honored, truly. And I hope that, that we can continue to work together. This is just like a really good match. Yes, this is an appetizer <laughs> thank to, you, to thank more you. that's able to come. Um, <laughs> and thank you all so much for joining us for this theater talk, and we hope to see you in the theater soon.